In this video, we're going to be tackling the lead code question, zigzag conversion. And on the surface, this question seems pretty difficult, but once you break it down step by step, it's actually pretty easy. And let's just start off with something important, but small, easy. We're going to be given a string and we're also going to be given an integer. This string represents the string, the series of characters that you want to turn into a zigzag conversion. And the example that we always are given is PayPal is hiring. That is the example that everybody uses. And that's going to come in handy in just a second. So make sure to pay attention to that word. Also, we are going to be given the number of rows. And the number of rows is ironically important because without the number of rows, this question would be so fucking hard. So thank God they gave us the rows. And what we want to do, we want to take that string, that string that I said was very important, PayPal is hiring, and we want to turn it into a zigzag. What exactly does that mean? Well. Either physically or in a simulation, we're going to zigzag just like this through our string. And after we get done zigzagging, we're going to take all of those rows and we are going to add them one by one. So we're going to take the first row, the second row, and the third row. And we're going to turn it into one giant string that looks just like this. And if you don't see the correlation here, let me just get rid of the zigzag pattern here. So the final result result will be pan apple sig your, and that's what the final string is supposed to look like. And we could do this physically. We could form a matrix and do this zigzag pattern physically through memory. But unfortunately our constraints being that they are 2000 are not going to allow us to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a simulation. What exactly does that mean? So in order to simulate this zigzag motion, we're going to break this question down into three easy steps. The first step, we're going to create an array of string builders. We're just going to create a little self-contained unit of string builders. And what this is going to represent is the number of rows and each row is going to house a different string builder. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to go through and we're going to actually perform the zigzag. But how does that work? Now this game existed before both of us were born, but we're going to use a very similar motion to the game Pong. If you remember the game Pong, both players had these paddles and they hit this ball back and forth using these paddles. And we're going to simulate the zigzag motion almost as if it's a pong paddle, just like this. We're going to take this pong paddle, which is really an index in a for loop, and we're going to go up and down in this motion. And we're going to add letters one by one as we iterate through the PayPal is hiring string that is given to us. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten down PayPal as hiring to just PayPal so that I don't bore you to death. And we're going to iterate through this string one by one. And as we iterate, we're going to add to our individual rows. So P, then we're going to iterate to the next element and we'll add A and we'll move on to the next element. So it's going to be Y. And we'll add Y to the bottom element. Then we're going to go up. The next letter is P. And we'll go ahead, add that to the middle element. Iterate one more. This one is A. Go ahead, add A to the top row. Then what we're going to do is finally get to the middle row. And we're going to add the L. Then finally, what we're going to do is we're going to add all the rows and it's a pretty simple step so we'll add the first row which is pa we'll add the second row to the first row so that we get one giant string so apl and then finally a y 
our final word will be Papli. What a wonderful word. So let's go ahead, let's hop over to IntelliJ and let's code this algorithm. So we are inside of IntelliJ and the first thing that I'm going to do is create a brand new Java class and I'm gonna call this solution. Within the solution class, we're going to house our algorithm and this algorithm is going to return a string. We're going to name it convert. And also it's going to take in a string called S and we're also going to take in the number of rows as an integer. So let's do a little bit of edge case checking. First, if the number of rows is equal to one, that means that it's just one word. So we're just going to return the word. Also, if the S dot length is less than the number of rows, it's also just going to be one row. And if it's just one row, all we have to do is return the string and not run the rest of the algorithm. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to create our data structures. And remember, we're going to be building an array of string builders. This looks a little crazy, I'm not gonna lie. But basically, this is an array with string builders inside of it. And this is going to save us a lot of memory instead of having a list. So what we're gonna do is we're going to build all of those rows and it's going to be pretty easy. We're just going to have our typical for loop. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this into a one liner and we're just gonna take each individual row and just place a string builder right inside of it. We're also gonna have a little bit of state and this is going to govern how the Pong paddle goes up and down in the algorithm. And we're also going to have a Boolean that's going to track whether the Pong paddle is going up or down. And we're gonna go ahead and just set this to false. And finally, for the moment of truth, we're going to create the code that's going to add the letters to our rows in a Pong-like fashion, going up and down. And first we have to process this string. We have to turn this string into a character array because we can't really do anything with it until it's an array. And once we get it processed, once we pull out each individual letter out of the string, what we're gonna do is we're going to append it to the current row. The current row is currently zero in this case. The current row is the state that we set at the top. Then what we wanna do is in order to simulate this Pong motion that I'm talking about, we need to go up and down if we reach the top or the bottom row. That doesn't make much sense. Let me just explain it. So first we're going to check if we're at the top. Then we're going to check if we're at the bottom. If we're at the top or the bottom, we're going to flip our going down state. Whether it's true, we're going to flip it to false. If it's false, we're going to flip it to true but we're also going to increment our current row. If we're going up or down, we have to increment or decrement our state depending on where we're at. So if going down is equal to true, we're going to add one. But if going down is equal to false, we're going to minus one because we want to go down. Finally, we're going to take all of these rows and we're going to add them together. And the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to take a very simple for loop, we're going to iterate through the individual rows. We're going to append them. And then finally, we're going to return everything as a string. That's pretty much it. So let's go ahead, let's copy this. Let's get out full screen and let's toss this into leak code, see what we get. When I bring this over, put this into leak code. I'm going to go ahead and bring this if statement over so it looks good. Hit the run button, accepted. Hit submit. Let's check our time complexity. Time complexity is N and memory is N. We have passed the interview. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.